Monroe. I'm one of the classifiers here at MEPS Atlanta Navy Liaison Office, and today's training is going to be over point score waivers. What's going on, uh, NRD Atlanta? This is N1 Shiro. Today we're going to do training on uh, point score waivers. So the first thing you need to know uh, about point score waivers is the documentation that you need to send it up on. That document is going to be called the 1133-39 slash revision June 2019. Again, that's 1133-39 slash revision June 2019. Now, you guys might be operating on old revision um, waiver briefing sheets. That is the waiver briefing sheet, by the way. If it does not say June 2019 when you submit it up, it will get rejected and kicked back. So in order to ensure that you're getting the right document, you can go into Pride. You don't even have to go into an applicant's Pride profile. Just go to Pride, pull up the Pride mod. Then you're going to go to the Actions button at the top left uh, hand side of the tab. It's going to be on the right hand side of the Home drop down. So it's going to say Action. You're going to scroll down to View Document Forms. You're going to wait for that Forms box to open up. It's going to say Select Options. It's going to be a Select Options drop down menu now. You could scroll all the way down or you could type in in the box the document that you need. Um, all you have to do is type in a document form 1133-39 and bam, a waiver briefing sheet pops up. At the bottom of that box, you're going to have three small boxes, view form, download form, and obviously close box to close the box. In order to get access to the form, we're going to hit view form. And that automatically generates the latest revision of the 1133-39 waiver briefing sheet. Now, you guys may be used to doing waiver briefing sheets for um, moral behavior, drugs, alcohol, things of that nature. It's going to be the same concept whenever you're doing a point waiver. So now that we know where to find the waiver briefing sheet, the next thing we're going to do is go over what goes inside of the waiver briefing sheet. So first things first is you have to understand, um, you have to know whether or not your applicant qualifies for a particular job that they need a point waiver on. Um, this here, and the best place to go to uh, get the information for that is through the uh, 680-380-P. Um, that's where you're going to find their overall score, their individual line scores, and their composite line scores. Um, the only information we really need to pull from here is going to be their overall score, which for this example is a 48. The individual line scores, which you see here in these highlighted sections. And then we're going to need the height and the weight for this applicant. Those are the only pieces of information that we need on this applicant. Also, date of birth. We're going to need date of birth as well. So now that we got that, there's a calculator um, involved in um, determining what they qualify for um, and how many points off they are uh, for a waiver. Uh, so you're going to take the individual scores and you're going to plug them into the calculator that we have over here. So... The GS line score is going to be 40, AR 56, WK 41, PC 43, so on and so forth, all the way through. Now, you're going to see a score line here that says CS, that's coding speed. That's going to be represented on the 68380P. If it's not on there, then you don't put it in there. If it is on there, then you plug it in there. Once you've uploaded the individual line scores, then you can flip over to another tab which is going to have all of the jobs listed with the, um, the applicable line scores for the applicable job. And it's going to show you uh, whether they qualify or they don't qualify. Over on the left-hand side, if it says no, that means they do not qualify. If it's green and it says yes, obviously it means they qualify. Over on the right-hand side of the column, um, 
is going to show whether or not the applicant qualifies yes or no uh, with the point waiver or not. Now, there's uh, varying degrees of margin um, of um, points that an applicant, um, a threshold of the, of the margin of points that an applicant is off by that will determine whether or not they are eligible for a point waiver. Normally, in the double digits, they will not be eligible. They, uh, if you try to send the waiver up, uh, Pride will return back a not best qualified determination. Uh, but that's that's based on the job as well. So for our example, applicant, um, I have a 113339 waiver briefing sheet point waiver request already drafted. Um, we're going to use IT as an example. Um, the 680 with the line scores, based on the calculations, I can already determine that this applicant is two points off for IT. Um, so that's what we went with. Uh, the line scores that are required for IT is AR, two MK line scores, GS, and they're going to have to hit uh, 222 for those combined line scores. This applicant numbers are 40. 56, 56, 62, and they got 220. So that means they are two points shy of qualifying for IT. Whenever you draft it up, here in the type of waiver required is where you're going to type in all of the pertinent information. Commanding Officer Navy Recruiting Command Points Waiver for ITSG mail in the month of June. Now it's important. You have to put in the information where the job is found at and where you want the individual to ship. If you don't put the job information in there, you don't put whether it's a male or a female, and you don't put the month that you're intending on sending a request for, they're going to reject the uh, the waiver briefing point waiver request. And obviously, you have to put the amount of points that you're requesting the waiver for in there, as well as the uh, combined line scores. Uh, that they are required and the actual line scores that they receive. Uh, there are three pages to the 113339 waiver briefing sheet. Um, page one, uh, here in this block, um, you're going to put the district that you are from. Uh, here is NRD Atlanta. You're going to put the recruiting station that uh, the applicant is from. Uh, the example of this applicant is going to be Douglasville. Um, you're going to put the applicant's name here in this block, last, first, middle, applicant's age, the recruiter that's responsible for that applicant. You're going to come down here to the um, medical information. The only thing they need here from the 2808, and you don't even really need it from the 2808 because remember, uh, they're going to have the height and weight information on the 680. You're going to put the applicant's height in inches here and that weight here. Um, if your applicant is single, you're going to put single. If they're married, you're going to put married. If they have dependents, over here in this block, you're going to put the, the number of dependents that they have. This applicant here is single, zero dependents. You're going to put in the education code. This applicant is a 12L. And then, again, we can defer back to our 680, 380P for the applicant's overall AFQT score, which is a 48. Once you got all that information in, and then you're going to come down to page 2. The only thing you're going to put on page two is the applicant's name, last, first, middle. You're not going to touch anything else on page two. Then you're going to go to page three of this, this document, and you're going to do the same thing, last, first, middle name, and uh, page three. Once you got all your stuff together, you're going to package the entire kit together. You're going to have start off with the 1133 39 um, waiver briefing for the point waiver request. All three sheets. You're going to have the uh, 680 380p along with this package. And you're also going to have that calculator sheet um, that shows the exact line that the applicant. Um, is off of for the, the point waiver. So here's IT, I gotta highlight it. Um, and all that goes along in the packet that you send up to uh, to Pride for the request. Once you got all that stuff together, you're gonna bring it over to your EPDS. Um, they're going to 
overlook the entire packet, make sure everything is good. Once they determine everything is good, down here on page three, the bottom of that block, they're going to sign the top block. As you can see, I got a mock uh, signature of Mr. Dean. That's not actually Mr. Dean's uh, signature. So it's just to show you that's where the EPDS was signed. They would check approved here. Once they got all that signed off, they approved. You get this package together. You scan it. You upload it. And then you email it off to Pride HQ, and then you wait on their approval, disapproval. Once they get approved, what you're gonna do is they're gonna uh, assign, they'll, they'll email you an approval uh, waiver number. Um, from there, you have to call Pride, let them know that um, your request, you got a point waiver uh, request approval for a particular job in a particular month for a male or a female. They'll go out and search the job, and then you'll give the social of the applicant so they can search and buy the job for you, and then they're going to ask you what that waiver code is. That's when you give them the waiver code from the approval email. Hope this has been easy. I am Ian one Chiro. If you have any questions, you can call us at 470-346-6900. Or you can reference the crew, man.